Can a regular club player turn his forehand into an ATP style forehand with lots of racket head speed? Getting this movement right is almost like cheating because it gives you so much racket head speed while maintaining a short compact motion. Right here you see Gregory Harrington's forehand before he received personalized video feedback from the OTI coaching team. His forehand was decent but he lacked power and depth and overall it was definitely not a weapon. And here you see Gregory hitting forehands now after he received multiple personalized video reviews from the OTI coaching team. As you can see his forehand improved dramatically and he now has a lot more power and depth on his shots. In this video we will show you three technical elements for more forehand power that Gregory improved and that you can also improve to take your forehand to a whole new level. As part of that we will also show you how to work on what we call the late hitting concept. Something that is often also referred to as maximizing the lag on your forehand. The best forehands in the world all utilize this concept and mastering it results in tremendous amounts of racket head speed on your forehand shots. But first let's watch parts of the initial forehand analysis that Gregory received by OTI Master Instructor Greg Lasseur. Hello Greg, Greg Lasseur here, online tennis instruction. Today we're going to take a look at your forehand ground strokes. So let's take a look at this here. Alright, so here we go. Um, so your grip looks good for topspin. Now a little bit you do... Um, take the racket back up and then a little bit past the plane of your shoulders. Uh, this where it really matters is where you start to play bigger hitters um, because time becomes a factor, right? So a little bit that goes fractionally too far, right? But again, I'm being very, very picky on that. But I know you, you're looking for those smaller details. So um, we'll see here, I like how you swing inside out. So as you swing forwards and upwards, see how the hand goes away from your body. That's a key component to great tops and ground strokes. Okay, you go after the target nicely. Don't quite transfer the weight all the way to the front foot. Okay, and we'll see that from the side. So you're kind of like trying to get back to recover very quickly, but you're not quite getting the full weight into the shot. So something you've got to be aware of. We want to definitely recover quickly but we still want to finish the shot before doing so, and that's something that great players uh, tend to do, all right? So look at the next one here, and this is the one where the racket folds over. You can clearly see in this particular forehand where, you know, if I draw a line here, you know, that racket, you know, it's behind your back, but also we want to think of the hand, and if we, if we look in relation to the shoulder, I always look to see the hands always on kind of this side. We never want it to be behind the shoulder, right? So you want to keep the elbow a little more bent, but keep the hand um, in front of the shoulder. If we look from the sides, it should be more in this in this position, okay? You know, when you, when you look at the, the ready position here, okay, kind of out of the frame a little bit, but you want to have that racket a little bit higher. I like to when a split, try to get the racket head almost up to eye level, all right? So you would have to push the elbows forward and then they'll bring the racket up because what happens is when you prepare, see how you bring the racket up, okay, it gets, it gets quite high here and then the result is the racket strings point slightly open. Now we've seen Adele does that because anatomically the higher you bring that racket up, just anatomically, the strings will then start to point upwards. But ideally, you know, try to keep the, the racket tip more at eye level, thereabouts. Okay, this is sufficient. And you see how the racket's angled slightly this way, the strings are down. You want to try and maintain as much as you can, having short take, take backs, compact take backs. So a little bit better in the ready position, we'll organize, looking at the tip of the racket, turning more eye level. And then I really think that what was going to help you is using the drills in the late hitting concept, it's uh, the total form domination will fall on power. I think you have the ability to, to work on late hitting, but even if you don't get the lag, just the drills alone, I use them very successfully uh, in, in live instruction and lessons and in clinics, and it gets people to shorten the take backs, and then some players will develop uh, the forearm lag. You definitely have the ability to do that. 
So I, I would highly recommend that you go through the drills, uh, look at module one, and I'll reference the videos, um, but there's explaining late hitting, and then there's parts one, two, and three. Work through those drills, and just the idea of you know, having your racket tip a little more to the side, point into the side, and when the racket falls, I have, I'm gonna have to draw on the court here just to make it a little more visible. When the racket falls, when it goes down, you wanna think a racket tip is pointing to the side fence. And then as you start to drive your hips, so you've gone through the 10 day quick start guides, talked about it, the hip drive and day two, as you start to drive your hips, the, ra the racket will start to move forward, right? So you get into that, 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 that you fully load with your legs, you're the lowest part of the swing, the slot, the racket tip to exaggerate is facing the side fence, maybe a little further back, all right? But then as you uncoil, as you drive, the racket will flip. So this was your racket, it would then flip like this to this inside position, we get that slot position. So it moves from here to here. Right, so the key is really delay the inside flip. Once again, just doing the drills will help you loosen up, but it'll help you abbreviate the swing and may even add some lag as a bonus. Okay, so it'll help you abbreviate the swing going through those drills. I really like how you close the racket. A lot of really good things happening here, all right? So I really highly recommend that for the um, shortening the take back. Um, you know, like I keep the left arm out there, try to keep it out a little bit longer. And just, uh, I don't think you have an issue with over-rotating, but just try to keep the elbow prevented from going behind you, right? But main thing is shorten that take back, work through the late hitting progressions. Now, if we look at the side here, now, first things, your ideal contact point would be in line with whichever toe is closest to the net, right? So whether you're playing open, semi, or neutral, whichever foot is closest is a general guideline, all right? Now your ideal um, hitting zone is between your knee and your chest, or your, 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 I should say your hitting zone is there. Your ideal hitting zone is around about hip height, all right? Now, it depends a little bit on the grip. You have a good grip for topspin. Um, looks like you're favoring more of like a, a grip four, if I can see correctly in the video. So, you know, with a with the Eastern grip, grip three, it's more hip level. And then with a semi-Western, maybe a little bit higher, all right, just because of the grip. And, you know, you can, you can do that, you know, if you just swing, fall down, you drop the racket, and then you swing upwards, lifting the shoulder, and you'll see where the racket naturally levels out, and it'll be a little bit higher, all right. So, but you're definitely within the range of correctness here. Okay, I actually have a block here. Let me see if this will draw for me. There we go. So that's kind of run, you know, in that window, and this would be kind of ideal with your grip maybe a little bit higher. Okay. So I hope that's answered that question. Now, as far as stepping in, um, if you do widen stance too much, if you cannot push with this back foot and you cannot drive this hip and core as described in the course, then you definitely know you, you're maybe stepping too wide. Not many people do this, most people understride, but there is a case of overstriding. So it looks like sometimes you do overstride. Uh, nice extension here. But you see here how you kind of on the heel of your foot and your your body lean or tilt is backwards, right? So you want to try to get the weight, if anything, you want to be up on the ball of your foot. Right, so you need to transfer it all the way to the front foot, where instead of this back foot being flat and grounded, you would actually be up on the back toe, and you'll see that in the quick start guide. You should also see when Florian talks about the X factor. All right, so you haven't fully transferred that weight. So at the end here, you want to think at least this is your body, maybe a little bit of a positive tilt, all right, and then you'll be up on the back toe, and then you may even be up on the heel. Sorry, the heel may, may be off the ground where you, you are more on the ball of the foot, on the front foot. Okay, and that's all in the quick start guide there. Good checkpoint is if you had to, at this point here, at the end of the swing, tap your back toe, what's, what would happen? You would fall backwards. So I just don't think you're fully transferring that weight. All right, you lean a little, little bit back there. Now, a lot of people lean back when they're hitting, but you almost want to think that your body's more like this at contact. All right, so... 
I recommend you know, doing days um, one, two, and three, the quick start guide, just focusing on the weight transfer and then spend time on day three, the, 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 the cell feeds, and get that transfer onto that front foot. And think of reaching up really high at the end. That'll help you to lift. But overall, it's got a very nice forehand here. But, um, you know, by shortening the take back, it'll help you to contact the ball a more in front. Also, the, the late hitting drills will help you to be a little bit looser. And then just working through the drills, trying to transfer the weight forward will help you. And just be aware of overstriding. Okay, sorry, this video's gone a little bit longer here. Just want to make sure I answered all your questions there. As you can see, these were critical elements of Gregory's forehand transformation. He did receive multiple forehand video reviews from us to achieve this transformation. The first personalized video analysis is usually a game changer and leads to big breakthroughs. However, most players then see how effective these personalized reviews are and decide to continue with more personalized feedback from us on a regular basis. If you're interested in your own personalized analysis of your forehand or any other stroke, make sure to check out our trial offer in the description below this video. So how can you work on shortening your backswing, developing a short compact motion and then adding the so-called late hitting concept or lag to your forehand? The first thing we ask players to do is to think of their shots as half volleys. This half volley concept has proven to be extremely effective to help players make their motion more short and compact. For a more specific guideline, you want to make sure that your hand does not move past the right shoulder if you're right-handed. At the same time, you need to make sure that your hand still gets close to the body, which you can see here with the green circle around my hand. It is close to the body so that I can swing inside out. Many players will then make the mistake and start too far on the outside here in the red circle. Now you can start there, but you have to get on the inside still, even if you're thinking of hitting a half volley when you're trying to make your motion more short and compact. Then you simply go through the typical progressions with shadow swings, drop hitting, hand feeding and so forth while thinking about making your motion more like a half volley and not taking the hand past the right shoulder. When that works well and you otherwise have good fundamentals on your forehand, and that's very important, without good fundamentals you really do not want to work yet on the late hitting concept that we'll talk about here. But when the fundamentals are strong, you have a short compact motion, then you can definitely start to work on the late hitting concept and that can add tremendous amounts of racket head speed to your forehand. So when you start to work on that, the first thing to focus on is to keep the tip of the racket pointing slightly to the outside, as you can see here. That makes it a lot easier to develop that lag on your forehand. If the tip of the racket points too much up here, it becomes very challenging to then later develop that lag in your swing. Here I simply demonstrate that the position of your elbow plays a big role here. If the elbow is tucked into your body, it really does not work. So you need to make sure the elbow is in the right position. And then you start with shadow swings here, very slowly. You see the tip to the outside, and now the tip points in the other direction behind me. And that is that so-called late hitting concept. Why is it called late hitting? Because this movement has to happen very late in the swing because otherwise you lose the power of this concept. Next is a drill where you flip the racket back, as you can see here, and the racket now actually touches my leg. So that's the goal here with this drill. You flip it back, pointing to the right and then to the left, and every time the racket slightly touches my leg. Now it's time for some self-feeding or drop hitting. The key here is to keep the tip of the racket pointing to the right side as long as possible. You really want to delay that flip. So you try to keep the racket tip pointing to the right and then when you start to swing forward, that's when the racket really flips backwards and that's the only way you can build up that elastic energy through that stretch shortening cycle. If you flip the racket back too early, you lose most of the power of this crucial concept. Finally, you try to find somebody who can hand feed you some balls 
or otherwise you can go for a ball machine or maybe even a coach or practice partner who can feed you balls from the other side of the net. So that's how you can work on these crucial technical elements and add a lot of racket head speed to your forehand. Right now we have a special trial of our OTI Digital Coach available for you. It not only gives you access to all our video courses and modules, but you will also receive your own personalized video analysis from one of our OTI certified instructors. Simply send us a video of the stroke of your choice during your trial and you will receive a voiceover video analysis with laser focused feedback on how you can transform that stroke into a real weapon. Simply click the link inside or below this video for all the details.